Good morning everyone. Uh, welcome back to another video. So it's a bit of a strange one today. Um, the weather is completely um, awful today, it's raining. Um, I haven't actually been given permission on this job to film, uh, but what I can do is um, just show you some pictures of what I've done. Um, I ran out of armoured cable yesterday, so I'm nipping to the wholesalers now, tool station, <laughs> just to buy um, a small length, because I don't want to just have it sat around doing nothing. Um, I've got a few bits to get, um, i.e. some crimps, a little box and that, we go through that and then we just want to, I want to show you some, um, I want to go through some toolboxes and bags today um, that have just hoarded um, up my little shed in there. So we're going to sort them out because I've been struggling with the toolbox and I absolutely hate it and it weighs about 20 kilos, it's too heavy. Um, so we're going to sort it out. Um, so yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to head over there now and uh, get some bits first. We're jumping between uh, phone footage and um, GoPro today. As you can see, this is what I've just picked up. Um, obviously, I bought this all individually. I already had a lot of this, but I didn't have a proper container to put it in. So this is going to have like little 13 amp fuses, 6 amps, 3 amps, sorry, 5 amps. Just some just some thread locker, 6 mils, just for the armoured glands. I can cut these down. They only had 30s. I wanted 15s, but... We can cut them down. So yeah, nice little kit there. Right, there we go. That is another little job done and dusted. Um, this is about the fifth or sixth job I've done for this particular client. Um, they're very happy with my work, costing, um, etc. Um, um, some clients don't want you walking around their house poking a camera and everything, which is absolutely fair enough. I um, mean, this particular client um, is as a. I'm not boasting, but is. Um, is quite well known so I'm not gonna say any more than that but obviously I don't want to poke around their house so I'm well within my rights to just show you specific pictures of um, sockets and cabling that's absolutely fine but again people don't want you poking around their house which is absolutely fine and obviously you should be getting permission from the clients um, before you do this um, it's quite funny actually I had a client say to me Chris I watch your YouTube channel you're more than welcome to um, to what uh, to film um, the job that you're doing but unfortunately I was so busy that week I, I couldn't put a video out and I had so many um, so many jobs to get done in that week and he's probably waiting and he, he might watch this um, I, I couldn't film um, unfortunately because I was too busy um, because believe it or not um, the other guys will vouch for me that um, filming on a job does take time and it, it probably adds an hour an hour and a half to two hours onto my day just going through um, explaining stuff I'm not pleading poverty because I do the videos because I want to do the videos I'm just saying that it does add maybe two hours to my day so if I need to get a bit of a shift on um, I don't get to film um, unfortunately so um, I'm just heading home now um, you've probably seen the pictures that I've done and done a bit of a walk through so it was basically power out to the new office three double sockets a 40 watt bar heater um, off of a local ring circuit um, fused down to 13 amps because they wanted like a kill switch so I had a two IP65 um, outdoor units one was a double socket one was a switch fuse spur so they can isolate the um, the office when they want to there so I'm going to head home now and I'm going to grab the boxes out, um, I'll stick you on the lap, stick some sort of softcore music on and um, we'll crack on. 
Right, while I remember, um, I found a much better use for this pipe slice than cutting copper pipe. Um, it's really good for doing armoured cable, actually. Um, so this is just a bit of 2.5 free core um, armoured cable. Uh, people go on about these, but if you've not been shown how to use it properly, you will do it wrong, like I did the first time. So I kind of put it on, clamped it down too much, and then I wound it round, and it was dragging the cores round rather than it coming off nicely. So what you need to do is start gently, let it bite through the black um, outer sheath, and then you'll actually hear it start to... Can you hear that? It's just grating now on the... Um, the SWA steel there. So you just do that a few times and you can just tighten it up a slightly a little bit more. Give it a nice cut. Um, these are good. They are quick. Um, you can pretty much do this in a couple of minutes. Um, so you just take that off. Yeah, I've got a knife here. Um, always remember to cut towards your chum away from your thumb um, so just take that off there like so get rid of that uh, this is Doncaster armoured um, I've had a few questions in the past saying Chris where do you get the um, the green and yellow the blue and the brown and um, this is just a Doncaster one they do because generally you get the three phase colors and if you see there look um, it does do a nice neat cut actually um, hasn't damaged the inner core at all um, whereas if you do do it with a hacksaw like I used to um, how I was trained to do it with a hacksaw because that's all we pretty much had um, there you go so that just takes a nice um, how many times can I say um today? That's uh, really annoying. As you can see there, I don't know how clear that is, but um, it's taken off the armoured there. And then all you would do, slide your boot on, slide your bottom of your gland on, take off this outer ring here. Like so. Obviously there are other ways of doing this, but... Um, this is the way I've always done it, and I've been doing this quite a long time. So there you go, nice neat cut. Wind round your armoured like so. You can't do this on big armoured, you have to bend them out. Slide your gland on, tighten them up. So there we go. So yeah, it is a nice tool actually, um, but much better for doing armoured rather than um, <laughs> copper pipe. Right, so here we go. These are the three bags. Um, Three bags, three tool bags I've got in uh, question that I've been talking about. Um, I'm going to go back to using this bag. I've been using the box, but I can't get on with it. It's too heavy. I'm going to get rid of this bag completely. So what I'll do is I'll stick you on the time lapse. Um, I was going to do it outside, but it's so so wet and um, dark and horrible and cold. So I've put an old dust sheet down. I'm just going to empty these out, and then I will stick you on the lapse, and we'll show you what we got at the end.
Right, I've sorted these out um, a little bit. I haven't put them away yet because I just wanted to go through tools that I absolutely need. 100% you, you need these tools to do your job. So number one is um, a good Stanley blade. Um, so what I'm going to do is quickly run through these. I'll put them away um, as I go. So yeah, number one, Stanley blade. Number two, a nice little boat level. This one's a rough neck. Um, it's got the magnetic base, so it's good for putting on the uh, metal consume units when you're trying to level those up. Three, this is one of my best tools I've ever bought. It's this tiny little clipping hammer. A lot of people take the mick out of this, but I absolutely love this. So this is definitely going back in the tool bag. Um, where I don't know yet. Probably in this bit here. Um, obviously tape measure, you definitely need a good tape measure, that's going in the side of the bag. A pair of tin snips, definitely need tin snips. Um, you might not use these every day, but when you do come to use them, um, you'll find them very, very um, handy. Look at that, falling out there already, they're going to go in there. Right, as standard, pliers, side cutters and needle nose or long nose pliers, uh, whatever you want to call them. They're going to go inside. Sorry about that, yeah. I had to get a glass of water. One. <coughs> right, this little set has got me out of the I'm probably a cheap Titan 10 pound um, one. It's got the little ratchet point. though. I just thought I'd get them. That's got me out of a sticky spot. That's a few times. Less. That definitely goes one in the bag. Um, two. Next, big set of grips. Get rid of the These ones um, have seen better days, really, Great. the handles have, but. Definitely, um, and feel yeah, free to set the video. Sure. Stick me on where the other set of guns um, are. One and a half times these will speed live or two times speed bottom. because, uh, off the tool bag, this could get fairly bored there. Some people will be interested for others. So, <coughs> a, a little set of next um, square. Steps, these are the need a square. Ones. Definitely need a set of those. Don't know what they're for. <coughs> Little trunking cutters. I used to use the ratchet ones, but they've gone a bit blunt, so I picked these yeah, cheap right ones. Next, up. screwdrivers. <coughs> uh, they're great for doing so that standard. Also, so they can do flat-headed screwdrivers. Um, trunking. Um, <coughs> never have too many screwdrivers because you never know when you will break one. Right. Two PZ ones. I think they're PZ one. Yeah. I'll just say they're PZ one. Bloody hell! I've got the PZ two. <coughs> and then you've got some little. Terminal screwdrivers for sort of seed and row size things, and then screwdriver for doing um, sockets, etc. <coughs> and these we have um, not that one, but that one. The next one they do that fits into double socket terminals, perfect. Because sometimes you can use one that's too small, and you feel like it's you know it's not gone up tight enough. You've got your three and a half mil and four mil um, threads. Oh, bloody throat for cutting out boxes. But I've got some dodgy uh, threads in the back boxes there. Two sets of um, adjustable spanners for doing um, SWA glands. This is what I use now. They can go in the bag. Uh, junior hacksaw, definitely need a junior hacksaw. Uh, and these sort of three are just sort of braddles. They're little long, good bradling screwdrivers. I don't really do anything up with these because um, they're not they're not quite. That's that's quite a nice quality actually. That is um, what do you call it? Same as that. Weirer. I quite like these. <clears throat> um, I could buy all the tools in the world, but to be honest, what I've got is adequate, and you you just send up. I'll just have another three or four toolboxes, which is ridiculous. Obviously, just a quick indication pen. Beep. <coughs> Get yourself one of those, and then last but not least, we've got pad saw, which is a must for cutting out plasterboard boxes. That goes in the bag. I picked up these. Um, I like this set. Set of Weira um, Allen keys with the ball on the end, hex key, whatever you want to call them. So they can go in the top of the bag, just there because they're not something you use all the time, but when you need them, they're really handy to have. Um, that, I do like this. <clears throat> Once you get used to it, they are good. So yes, I do know it's for armor cable. I was um, I was joking, look, armor slice. 
So a few people didn't know whether I was joking or not. So that'll go in the side of the bag. Um, Marksman, I like these just for shooting little um, chalk into the back boxes, etc. They're really good. So that can actually live in here because what I do is permanent marker and pencils. They live in here. Like so, and then I've got the sharpener, the big sharpener to go with them pencils. And then permanent marker can live there. Um, general socket tester, just for plugging in. Um, quick, quick indication. That screwdriver I broke the other day, and I wasn't, I wasn't misusing it. I literally did a terminal screw up and it snapped. So um, the Weha, they're all right, but they're not, they're not the greatest. Um, I've had cheaper screwdrivers that have lasted longer than than that, to be honest. And then, um, last but not least, uh, <coughs> mold grips. These are really good. If you want to cut a bolt down, you can clamp down on the bolt and then cut with your hacksaw. So again, essential, really. In my eye, so I've I've wrapped that out. There's a few bits here um, that I will put in this bag, but they're not really essential. Like I've got some big croppers. I don't know why I've got bloody three sets of them. But so what I'll do is I'll just chuck two sets in the bag that I don't really need, but I'll keep. Second, um, Stanley blade. So it's good to have a backup just in case. So he can live in there with that one. Second set of the six inch cutters I don't need. Um, another pad saw, I don't need. Bradlin screwdrivers, don't need those. Trunking cutters, don't need those. Uh, rubber mallet, definitely need a rubber mallet. I bought another punch down tool because I broke mine the other day. And just a ruler for square enough drawings if you're doing big jobs. Some files, a flat and a round file if you're ever doing conduit, which these days I don't do a lot of to be honest. I used to do weeks on end of steel conduit, believe it or not. Um, these little, I love these Milwaukee. I've had the same one on my drill for about three months now and I haven't snapped it. So they're really worth the money, paying the extra for them. Um, standard set of tapes, front of the bag. Uh, big hank of green sleeving, because you never know. You don't want to go traipsing back to the van when you just want to do a bit of second fixing. And a paintbrush. I know that sounds weird, but for cleaning out boxes, etc., um, they're really good. So this back of this bag is completely empty. So what I can do is just fill it up with these last few remaining items, like so. Um, that I'm going to keep safe actually in the bag because they, they break quite easily. And then last but not least, again I've said that about seventy times. A little head torch. Um, chuck that in the bag. I have bought a uni light, um, believe it or not. Um, I haven't really had the chance to use it yet because I've been doing jobs where I haven't needed it. But this goes on my impact gun. That's a long extension, which I love. So yeah, I'm going to just get all this cleaned up and I'll come back to you in a second. Hope that was a little insight into what I actually have in my tool bag. Right guys, that is me done for today. That's probably a bit close, but thanks for joining me on another one. Bit random today, but um, I'm going to the college um, soon to see Gaz and the lads, so that's going to be a cracking day. And also don't forget to check out the NIC, um, EIC official website. They're doing Apprentice of the Year competition, so 
get yourself registered on there and don't quote me on this, but I believe you can win prizes, tools, money, etc. So I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, I, I had a message from them the other day. Could I, could I just give this a little plug on the social media? So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. Um, so yeah, give it a thumbs up. As always, give it a thumbs down. I absolutely don't mind. Thanks for joining me. Take care. See you on the next one.